Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we'll be taking a look at my 1999 Saab 95 station wagon. Now I'm doing a couple things to get this ready for sale and one that we'll be looking at today is restoring or at least attempting to restore the leather uh, upholstery and everything in this vehicle. And here's the thing, I've never done this before, uh, but this, this I think is going to be a good vehicle to learn on. I don't think we're going to be able to ruin anything or make anything worse than what it already is. So I'll just get into it. Uh, but I purchased a kit and we'll give it a try. So as you can see on the driver's seat here, uh, this is all perforated leather um, as far as the inserts. And it's, um, it's okay. There's some cracking um, and a little bit of the color is worn. It definitely could benefit from a good cleaning. Across the bottom, uh, the upholstery is a little loose. I can't really change that. Otherwise, it could use a good cleaning, but it's in pretty good shape. There are no rips or tears. On the bolster, it's starting to get pretty worn away, so I'll see if we can finish over that and then re-dye it. There's some large cracks developing here on the bottom bolster. Thankfully, it hasn't ripped yet. Uh, the console is a little bit worn, otherwise in good shape. A little bit of wear here on the edge on the passenger seat. Uh, that's not so bad. And by the way, these don't look half uh, bad in person. Uh, it's the, the camera makes them actually look really like dirty and grungy. Uh, they aren't quite that nasty. Uh, the driver's uh, headrest here, there's some more cracking. I mean, that's just kind of the general thing that you'll see with this. Uh, splits, cracks, rips, tears, uh, wear, fading, discoloration. You know, we can see we have fading here. Um, some d cracks here that aren't haven't split out yet, but they're kind of close. The rear seats are actually in really nice shape. This is kind of what it should look like. Very nice and clean. We have the headrests up here. These are in great shape. This seat belt for the middle seat was seized, so all the leather's a little bit collapsed. I don't know if there's anything we can do about that. I'm going to see if we can kind of like restuff that to make it fill. But at most, uh, at worst, we can basically just put the buckle back over it and it'll look okay. So that's all. What will happen is that the, well, anyway, the seat belt gets jammed. Uh, it'll retract the whole way and you have to unbolt it or else shake the mechanism loose because it thinks it's been in a crash. But anyway, not important. Uh, here we have some light rips and some heavy wear. This leather is still pretty soft and supple here. You'll notice this peeling up with some wrinkling here. I think that's going to be simple. It just simply needs uh, this piece tucked back onto this seam and folded back over. At that point, maybe we can kind of crimp this on so it doesn't come back off. So you can see rips, tears, fading, discoloration, all the typical stuff, uh, everything that there is, we have. So I'm going to try to uh, go over this and freshen it up a little bit and we'll see what we, what we get. Again, never having done this before, we'll see how it goes. Here's the kit that I have right here. We have cleaner um, and also some protectant. There's a sponge, there's a Scotch-Brite pad to, um, well, we'll get to that in a second. Here's the dye itself. Now, for an older vehicle like this, you can see if you can get the original color if you were doing a patch. However, in this case, I've just got something that, uh, it, this is the factory color, but what I'm saying is, I, I'm doing the entire thing because after this long, who knows if after the sun and dirt and wear, if that color is even close. So if you're doing a patch, you may want to do a custom blend or just plan on doing the whole thing or just be uh, satisfied with one seat or one area being a little bit different. Uh, not to go and make that too wordy, but that's kind of the thinking behind that. Uh, again, more cleaner, more protectant, another sponge. Here's some filler and backing and a little uh, like putty knife there almost and some uh, glue or bonding agent for the for this repair patch, which we may or may not need. And then there's Scotch-Brite to kind of sand all that down. So I'll cover all the steps, but this is basically what you're gonna need. I'm sure many other kits are similar and available online that are pretty affordable. All right, so I'll get everything set up and we will um, start in the front and work our way around.
So everything is now clean and dry. I did um, quickly hit this with some 400 grit sandpaper and then did re-clean it. Uh, some of the ridges on these cracks were a little high and I'm not sure if that's the right thing or wrong thing to do, um, but I think it might help it look a little better in the end. So I did do that, just a couple passes back and forth to kind of knock off some of the rough edges. Uh, and then next for the filler, we have this uh, small container here and this little spreader, which we might, might end up using something else then, but I think, uh, I think the idea here is that we just kind of work it into the cracks. And they, they say to build this up in light coats. This actually seems pretty easy to spread. It wants to fill the, the, uh, the crack really well without building up much on the surface. So I think in this case, we'll just kind of start um, and we'll float this all over the entire panel. Just kind of work out the low spots, uh, being careful to kind of make sure that it doesn't build up too much in the joints you here where the leather comes together. Basically, we'll just spread that out. Now, you wouldn't necessarily want to fill up all the cracks, um, like some of these fine ones here on the edge, I'll fill up just for continuity across this panel. But if there is a little bit of texture to the leather, you wouldn't need to fill it all in unless you'd want to, of course. See right there, I got a little bit more than I wanted to right in that joint. So we'll see if we can just clean that out a little bit. And then we'll end up cleaning it up later, I'm sure. We'll just go through and fill all these up just a little bit. And while this, the seat bottom bolster sets up, I think next I'll work on this uh, upper bolster here. So again, just kind of spreading everything with, with the spatula. So again, this, this isn't so much cracks, this is more um, just kind of like a worn area that we need to kind of build back up. So the spatula may not be the best idea for this. I think I have another idea that might work just a little bit better. All right, with a glove and a little bit of this cream, I think I'm just going to kind of massage it around into the seat um, just to kind of fill the low areas. And that might work a little bit better. It'll give me a better feel of um, how smooth and even everything is coated. That may have been a little bit too much to put on, we'll see. With everything coated, I will next take a hair dryer and we'll see if we can accelerate this drying process a little bit. So here's the seat with everything recovered or uh, coated, I guess, for the first time. So that's you can see all the cracks are filled a little bit, which will give this a little bit more care. And then the bolster is also uh, smoothed out quite a bit. So after hitting that with the hair dryer, it does feel pretty dry. I'm going to give it a little bit more time. And then I believe we're going to hit this with uh, some sandpaper. And I think I'm going to coat it again just to kind of make sure that some of this is filled in. It still feels a little rough here, although this up top feels very smooth. Uh, and then in the meantime, I'll go ahead and clean the backrest and I'm going to go clean the passenger side and the console. Uh, nothing there is ripped, I don't believe so, or torn or creased. Um, so I'll get all that cleaned up and then we'll move on to the next step. The next thing to repair is this headrest and I've already gone ahead and cleaned this. Uh, as you can see here, some of these cracks are a little high on the edges. So I'll just take this uh, 400 grit sandpaper and um, this might not work. I might have to put the camera down, but basically we're going to sand that smooth and um, knock it down a little bit. So let me do that and then we'll pick it right back up. So unfortunately I don't have a great way to film this, but if you can tell these ridges are just a little bit smoothed out um, on the edges there. It's kind of knocked down a little bit. So the next thing that we'll do is we'll take the uh, filler and just kind of spread that over 
and I'm going to spread this on a little thick and then we can just sand it back down. But as you can see, that just about fills up all of those cracks. And then once this is dry, uh, like, like it says, we can, uh, we can sand it back down again and add a little bit more in if need be. So both bolsters now are uh, dry. So we'll give it a quick sand here and see what we get. So this is again just 400 grit sandpaper. We just want to lightly go over everything and knock down the high spots. And with everything wiped down, we'll go over uh, everything with another coat of the filler just to build up any uh, remaining low areas, anything we missed the first time around. So with everything sanded down, uh, this entire area is nice and smooth, I don't have any issues with it. Um, maybe I'll just put in a little bit more through this one crease and then I'll do a little bit more in this area. And I don't think this time I'm going to use a glove, that didn't seem to work too, too well, uh, although you could do it. But I think I'll just kind of spread it around like this and fill in this area, which is a little hard to get to right now with uh, not trying to block the camera and everything, but just kind of fill this area in and then this one crease right down here. Alright, so I've made good progress on the interior. First, we'll start here with the headrest. Um, I've filled all these cracks and sanded everything down smooth. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is um, when you sand this, you're kind of removing the natural grain of the leather. So just be a little careful. It still will kind of crease where it, where it uh, was creased before as far as like the fold marks and everything in it. But just be aware of that. If you sand it too much or work with it too much, it could be kind of flat. Now, flat, of course, is better than rips and tears, but it may not be kind of quite what you're looking for. Uh, but here we kind of have to deal with what we've got. So I did try to fill in some of the large cracks here and everything sanded down. Uh, so it's kind of all uneven, looks kind of nasty right now. So I really hope everything uh, does work out pretty well. But that's all nice and smooth. It feels good. Um, same here with the backrest and top. I filled a couple areas all around. This bolster is also in good shape. It's a little bit high there. Uh, that's sanded down smooth. That filled in a little dimple. But yeah, all the cracks and everything are gone here. It's kind of uneven looking again with you've got light material, dark material, the white. Uh, but the thing is, this may look terrible on camera and it, it looks terrible in person, but it's very smooth. You know, if you run your hand across it, there isn't much of an issue. Uh, so I'm practicing the dye over here just to see how everything blends. So don't mind that. Uh, as far as this bolster goes, I did a couple more coats on this just to kind of build everything up, repeating what was going on before. Uh, this looks really high, but it's actually kind of flat. Everything feels perfectly smooth. It looks pretty good, so we'll see how that turns out. And the console, I did the same there. Just be careful of the stitching. If you, if you um, sand the stitching, it'll kind of start fraying. Let's go around to the passenger side and take a look at that. So I, as you can see, I have the headrests removed here, but um, again, just filling in a couple creases. So this area here, um, this, there were a couple small cracks there and things. There were some deep like folds. These weren't cracks or splits, but I decided to fill this just a little bit for continuity across the seat. Uh, this bolster was fine. The seat is in pretty good shape, and I just filled a couple light cracks here, so this needs sanded down yet. 
Uh, moving on to the back seat, my plan to do this uh, is going to go as follows. So we'll pull the headrests up, and um, this will be different, you know, in a, any in another vehicle, of course. But I'm going to get all the headrests out, and the console we kind of have to do in place. A lot of this is vinyl, so we'll only you know do bits of it selectively. We'll try to end it like a hard seam. We'll see. We want to try to make it look neat. As far as taking care of the bottom cushions, I think uh, in this vehicle, since it's simple enough, we'll just remove any electrical connectors that we have and then these simply uh, slide over and then they'll lift up, which is probably easier to do when I'm not filming. But we'll get those out of the way and I'll do those on the driveway and that way we'll be able to get all around to the seats. And in order to do these, uh, we may, I may pull out these side pieces here, and then we'll have to figure out a way to hold the buckle out of the way as well, which will be different for every vehicle. Uh, the good thing is these car, like this is an older car, so that these aren't super tight tensioners. We may be able to just, um, you know, pull it out most of the way, and it should, it might just stay. All right, so that's kind of the gist of that. We'll get this uh, tucked back together. Basically, everything here is just going to need clean, and it'll be the same as before. We'll see if we can deal with these areas right here. And this the one rip on the back of the passenger seat, which we'll look at then. So upon closer inspection, I don't think this repair is going to be perfect, but we'll see if we can't fill it and make it look a little better. So I've gone through and removed all the loose pieces uh, that that came out, and I don't think there's any need for backing because there's still kind of a backing there. So I'm going to just attempt to go ahead and just fill this up um, as lightly as I can for the first coat and just see what happens. So we'll just try to get complete coverage and then just kind of feather it on the edges as best as possible. And then once that dries, we'll sand it down and uh, go from there. And this is gonna need a couple coats. And again, I don't think it's gonna totally go away, but maybe we can make it uh, a little less obvious that it, was, uh, that it was ripped. That would still be a win in this case. So there's no way to fill the bottom of this bolster, but I think for the top, I just need to bring this up just a little bit. So I have some foam here, and um, I'm gonna try to take a couple pieces neatly, and then just kind of slide that down in behind just to kind of pull this up, if that's possible. and that's all filled back up. Uh, the depression from the headrest, I'm not too worried about. The headrest will be put back down in that uh, place. I mean, the car is 20 years old and probably never had the headrests up, so that's probably why that is. But anyway, that's back up, and the trim piece that goes over that should line up. I think it goes the other way around, but still. That's relatively flat and level. That should that should work. So all the removable parts are uh, clean and everything except the one headrest is all sanded down and ready for dye. Uh, the headrest needs another coat, I just have it out here in the sun. And then moving on to the vehicle itself, just a little bit of a mess. 
Uh, so in the front seat here, again, everything has been sanded down and is ready to go. I've actually started working on the die just a little bit there, just building it up. Uh, looking pretty awful, but hopefully much better very soon. And then moving on to the back seat, uh, this area right here is going to need a little bit of time to set up. That'll be a little bit separate. We may end up coming back to that at the end. Uh, otherwise, everything is good on the back of the front seats. Um, as far as the rear seat here, the only patch areas, this this one buckle for the seat belt is messed up. I'm going to have to get another one or figure something out for that. But um, the trim's missing, so the sharp edges have torn up the leather here. So I'm just still patching that up. I'm, I'm waiting on that to dry. And then on the back edges of the seat, uh, there was a, it was a little scuffed up from cargo. So I'm still waiting on that to dry as well and that, for that to be sanded down. But basically everything except the rear seat and the headrest is, uh, is ready to go. So the next thing we want to do is kind of tape or mask off whatever we don't want to get dye on. Uh, we'll be applying it with a sponge and a small container so it's not like a spray or anything but basically what I'm going to do is take like painters tape and go right across this vinyl seam right here and just kind of tape everything off nice. That way we can kind of get down into this seam and um, recolor all of the leather. Make sure you have a way to hold the seat belts out of the way whether that's some masking tape or something else and then just be aware of uh, how you're going to get to everything down here in between this gap is going to be a little tricky. I'm not sure if we can get the seat uh, far forward or back enough to be able to reach that from one side, but we'll have to do that. And we'll also have to find a way to keep this uh, seat belt buckle out of the way so that we can get the die on as well. We don't want to have die all over everything. That'll just be a mess. Uh, this car is a little bit of a mess already because it's been um, driven and it's messy right now with me getting in and out and in and out again, but it'll all have to be detailed. We'll cover that on another video possibly, but for right now we just have to worry about the issue at hand and then not screw up anything else while we're at it. So while everything else dries off in the sun, um, I do have the driver's seat ready and uh, ready to go here. So everything's ma masked off with this tape. Uh, pay extra attention to like the most visible seams, which will be this one and then kind of at the top around the back. But I have this uh, container right here with the sponge. And what you want to do after you sh shake up the container, uh, so you want to spread the die on thin and even. And you also want to kind of tuck it into the joint so that it doesn't look you know, bad if the uh, when you sit in the seat and the upholstery kind of folds back. So I've kind of started a little bit on the other side just to see how things would go. We'll kind of start right here on this edge for the video. So again, we'll kind of dip, dip the sponge in a little bit. And then we'll just start here on the flat part. Now that's a little bit much. So we'll just see if we can lighten that up a little bit. And again, taking care just to kind of get it into the crease there. All right, and then we'll also go into this crease here and I'm actually going to kind of press down on the leather to help separate that joint. And I think it would be acceptable to go a little bit heavier with the dye on these areas just to kind of get the color established there. Now this being perforated we have to be a little bit more careful not to uh, flood the upholstery with dye since of course it's not going to just lay on the surface, it'll kind of soak in. But that's what we're going to do for the step one. It's just kind of go over and do a real light coat. And this may even be just a little bit heavy. All right, and then working our way back across this patched area. Now it actually seems to want to absorb a little bit nicer on this area and it seems like it's going on a little bit more thick. Uh, on areas where there's more leather and less filler, this probably would be a little bit much, but I think here the filler is kind of absorbing it all up.
get into all the gaps and cracks I have a little foam uh, sponge brush here and that lets you get into all the little gaps that you wouldn't otherwise be able to get into that'll just give a little bit more finished and uh, nicer look in the end so that's the first coat I'm pretty happy with the coverage I was able to get into most of the seams really well uh, I think it's going to look pretty good. So pretty good coverage. You can still see a lot through it. That's just coat one. Again, we may need up to six. Uh, but there you go. That's kind of the idea. I think it looks pretty decent for a start. So I'll go ahead and do the rest and uh, take a look when it's all finished. All right, so at this point I've done the passenger seat and the driver's seat, um, and that's about it. But I think if I was to... Um, if I was to do this over, I would do the bottom cushion first and then do the backrests. So I think at this point I'm going to switch over and do that. But basically what I'm doing is I have this, again, the small brush. I'm able to get real far back in. Uh, we can put a light coat on everything. Everything that we don't have access to. And then this brush is also really nice to get in all the seams. We want to kind of be careful, again, not to flood this perforated leather. But we also do try, want to try to get dye down in and um, get everything coated. But at any rate, you kind of get the idea of um, how it goes on. But let's do another coat on this bolster and see what happens. So again, I've got the sponge here with the dye on it. I want to kind of do like a light, a light coat. And again, having gone through all the seams, we can just go ahead and go over everything here. This painter's tape does make everything nice, makes everything go a lot easier. There we go. All right, one more coat. And it's already looking much, much better. You can still see some of the creases in, but I think that should uh, should come out with additional coats. All right, but that's kind of the idea. We're just going to build it up from there. Let me go ahead and do the rest of the coats on these uh, front seats, and then we'll look at it at the end. This is this project has taken a little bit longer than I had anticipated. I don't know what I was uh, thinking it would take, but we're kind of getting late in the day. I want to kind of get this wrapped up with the time that I have. But basically, that's the idea of um, how you do it, just building up one coat on top of the next. Hello everyone, I uh, just wanted to let you know that um, basically this has taken a little bit longer than I thought. So basically I've laid out the idea of how everything works, so I just kind of need to get everything done and I'll insert some clips then uh, at the end. But basically one thing I did learn, and again I go for authenticity on this, um, and like I said this, I've never done this before, so I'm kind of learning as I go. And one thing that I learned that is uh, super important is you don't want to run the sponge over like I did earlier. That was fine on that one area, but if you do that, it's going to give the seats like a brush painted look, which isn't right. And beyond that, it's going to give it too smooth and flat of a surface, uh, which doesn't help match the texture of the leather and also doesn't help hide any uh, imperfections now or down the road. So what you'd actually want to do is kind of like this, and this might even be a little thick, but really you want to apply this as light as you can. You want to just kind of dab on the dye and then let it dry uh, and you can also and it has to be really dry before you put the next coat on or else it'll kind of stick together and then that won't look right either but you really do want to try to cover everything over real nice with a sponge and I guess that that makes sense and that's why it, they give you a sponge if it was meant to be painted on they could say you know you could do it with a brush but um, just make sure you sponge everything on and the bubbles are okay actually I was kind of worried about that and then if you go over it with a hair dryer, now it's it still has some evening out to do. Um, as far as color there, once it all dries, it should be more uniform, but that'll get you a lot closer to the, to the results you want. Otherwise, and again, we'll talk about this at the end, but um, I'm learning a lot doing this. Let's just put it that way. This is quite the process. All 
Hello everyone, it's the next day. Uh, this is taking a little bit longer than I had planned. Uh, let's start here in the back. So I have about the like the middle and uh, right or passenger side seat uh, just about died. I have the bolsters died. I still have to do the headrests and the passenger side or right hand side uh, seat, bottom and top cushion. I'm working on the back here. So this is just about done, maybe one more coat. This has taken about four coats on the leather where there wasn't a patched area and about six where there was. So this is coming along really well. I've patched up the little puncture on here and all those little scrapes. Uh, this seat is in good shape, just waiting for the dye. Still waiting on this. It's dry, but I'll work on it a little bit later. So I'm kind of learning this project takes a long time. Um, it would have been a better idea to do like one seat per weekend, but with the color not matching, I was kind of worried that if I didn't get to it uh, right away, I would forget and not get to it at all. So anyway, I bit off a little more than I could chew. But regardless of that, here are the front seats all finished up. I think this looks really good. Again, it looks a little blotchy on camera and it, it's not perfect, but it doesn't look quite that bad. Um, kind of looks, the camera makes it look dirty with the perforations there. So otherwise everything looks great up here. Uh, we don't really have anything too messy to clean up. There's no huge uh, runs or drips. Everything's right to the edge of the leather. It looks great. So very impressed. I think this is uh, a little bit of an improvement. And I, I'm not much of a fan of, of re-dyed leather. I, I wish it didn't have to happen. But the thing is, I think that having the whole interior all spiffed up like that instead of the cracks and rips and tears definitely makes everything look a little bit better. So basically at this point I'm going to finish uh, dyeing what needs done yet and then we're going to wait five or six hours well four to six but i'm going to probably wait about five hours uh, after the last coat has been put on and then we'll go on to the last step which is uh, the protectant right here so this is going to go on and um, kind of protect everything from uh, the, the dye coming off it kind of seals the dye and gives it a layer of protection uh, on top of the dye itself so all right well back to it we'll see how long uh, this takes to complete All right, it's evening again, uh, but we've made good progress. So again, with the front seats here, um, everything looks great. This turned out really, really well. I'm very impressed with it. Let's take a look here at the back. This was very time consuming, all the pieces, uh, just going over all the headrests here. Uh, even just that took some time, doing around the console, everything. Um, I was able to get into the seams really well course taking everything apart so I was able to work the die back to the edges of the, of the leather which is just great uh, but this looks this looks wonderful and if you've been watching this for a long time or this channel for a little while not a long time but uh, just for a little while I've recently done the door handles and a couple other things just to kind of spruce everything up so this is kind of the last step so anyway uh, it, it went great the only thing is I would recommend after having done this this basically took up my entire weekend uh, aside from about some things that uh, I was doing for a couple hours while this was going on. So my recommendation would be one, uh, try to get the leather matched as best you can. Uh, so for example, in a situation like this, maybe go to a scrap yard and get a headrest that matches the same color as the vehicle that you have, cut a little piece from it and send it off for a custom match, or just do one seat at a time, uh, per, like maybe one per weekend. Um, doing all the seats at the same time was a little bit much. And also, let's go over a couple of the finer details here. So I was able to get everything patched up here. This hole is now gone, completely, completely sealed. This I was able to get tucked back in. Uh, this little hole I was able to patch. There's no longer a hole, and the color actually matches pretty well, uh, but you can still kind of see it. But again, it's not ripped. Uh, these backrests, all of that is patched up, no more scuffs or scrapes there and that all, again that's all dyed back to the carpet and the leather so that all looks great uh, no more sun baking there no more fading and bakedness there and this is still spongy and it's not like it's gonna come off on my hands or anything like that I still do have to poke out some of these holes in the um, in the perforation you can see like right there I did try something with like a pointy end like an awl uh, but that didn't seem to work so maybe I need something more cylindrical but that'll take a little bit of time to, to uh, check with but again no no um, creases or rips this looks great uh, if you kind of 
put some weight on the seat you can kind of see where it was split and cracked but it doesn't seem like it's going to split and crack again and the whole thing to keep in mind with this this isn't like oh my the seats are all new they're perfect and flawless no 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 this is just um, a less expensive way to get a lot more mileage out of leather seats without having to go ahead and replace the entire material all right so without going on any longer here uh, the next step that we're going to do is apply this cream so they um, they say to shake it up and then you would you want to pour it onto a cloth and then wipe it onto the all the material that you had just dyed and then that sits for about half an hour and then you'll go over it again and just kind of wipe everything off so we'll go ahead and do that next So every surface has been coated, uh, front and back. So just apply a light, um, a light layer evenly with the cloth. You don't want to actually apply it too hard. You want to kind of leave a film or a little bit of a coating on the surface. So if you wipe it all off, it's not really going to do much. So just apply it uh, gently, evenly, but just a little bit thin, and we'll pick it up in half an hour and see how it looks. Welcome back to what will be the last clip of this video. I have everything put back together. Uh, everything's been buffed down a little bit here. The only thing I can tell really is that it's a little bit shinier than what it was. Uh, not shiny, but just not quite as flat. Uh, but here's the thing, considering what we started with, especially on this bolster, this looks really nice. And again, it kind of looks dingy on camera and it's getting dark out, which isn't great, but I want to get this wrapped up. But this looks really, really good. Everything's really even, the surface feels nice. It doesn't seem like we've lost um, any any of the feel of the leather it certainly feels like it's going to hold up over time that protectant did a really nice job uh, it does feel really nice under you know with your hand running across it it feels nice and smooth and silky all right that's about it um, one question i did have going into this i thought you know i wonder why more people don't do this this seems like a great idea a great way to get a little bit more life out of the vehicle and i kind of got my answer this ate up my entire weekend more or less so that's probably it is it worth it well that depends, but just uh, just be ready for a little bit of time if you go to do this yourself. So anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Maybe you enjoyed seeing a 9.5 get fixed up a little bit. Uh, maybe you were even able to learn something from this rubbish that I put together. But anyway, thank you very much, and we'll see you with the next one.